بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس آئی ایم احمد ممتاز مستحسن آئی بین گیون دی ریسپانسبلٹی ٹو ٹیچ یو دا کورس انٹروڈکشن ٹو کمپیوٹر پروگرامنگ دا کورس کوڈ از سی ایس سی ون فور ون اسٹوڈینٹس دس از اے فور کریڈٹ آر کورس اینڈ بائی دس ٹائم یو مائٹ نو وٹ ڈز فور کریڈٹ آر مینس فور کریڈ آر مینس ڈیٹ تھری فور ود ان بریکٹ تھری کاما ون اٹس مین ڈیٹ یو نیڈ ٹو اسپینڈ تھری آرس پر ویک لسننگ دی ریکچرس اینڈ ون کریڈ آر ول بی گرانٹیڈ ٹو یو فار یور ہینڈس آن ایکسرسائزز اینڈ دی ٹائم ڈیٹ یو ول اسپینڈ آن یور کمپیوٹر ایز ایف یو آر ورکنگ ود اس ان دی ریک This one credit hour is not one hour. One credit hour means that minimum you are required to spend three hours per week doing hands-on exercises. So then you should be able to get the credit and award of one credit hour. So basically this four credit hour course means you are required to spend six hours per week, three hours listening the lectures so there should be on average two lectures and we assume that one lecture should contain the material that is equivalent to the material taught in 90 minute lecture and so with the the combination of two lectures and one labs on hands on exercise on the computer will earn you a uh, four credit hour per week and that means we need to spend 16 weeks together in order to award you four credit hour course i uh, just quick introduction to myself i've done my masters in computer sciences in way back in 1979 81 from kaidi azam university and uh, i have got my specialization spent three years in france and uh, had the uh, got the opportunity to work as a expert of the or the student of the satellite image processing so i've spent 16 years exclusively working with the satellite image processing and GIS. So over and above, I have uh, spent around uh, 30 years, more than 30 years in the industry, serving either in the educational environment or educational institution or in R&D environment. I have served as a middle management and in the top management in different national and international organization in different capacity i've got an experience of uh, uh, doing hands on lot of lot of hands on uh, programming and i've done programming I started my programming with uh, fortran language and then later on i've done lot of uh, programming in the assembly language then came uh, c language and it was introduced uh, after my graduation so i have learned it and then i have taught it and also i have used it in number of multinational projects so i've got uh, sufficient uh, hands on programming experience and uh, i've contributed it in the number of uh, projects of national interest so uh, i'm sure that you will enjoy working with me i'll be giving you hands on demonstrations and uh, i will try all my level best to teach you the skills and art of the programming in C language the introduction to the course the objective of this course is basically to introduce the computer programming using C or C++ environment the fundamental concepts of the computer programming so you will learn the basic concepts of programming not only the programming since this is the first course so i will also be covering some basic fundamentals of it and the basic com fundamentals of the computer sciences so then i'll be teaching you the the uh, hardware software and the concepts related with the computers and it so the course 
In this particular course, I'll be focusing on the structured programming, means start with the structured programming and also let you know what does this, this structured programming means and what is this uh, programming paradigm. And then uh, at the end of this particular course, I'll be introducing you the concept of the object-oriented programming. We'll be using and mixing up the different terminologies that are common to C and C++. So just don't be confused and don't worry, in the final lecture, I will explain you a very precise differences, which are very few, by the way, of the C and C++. But the overall difference is that uh, C is considered to be a uh, structured language, programming language, a structured programming language, procedural language. But the uh, C++ is considered as an object-oriented the programming uh, paradigm. So uh, that is the objective of this particular course. The course outline that I will uh, uh, put it up into the web uh, portal, the course portal that I will invite you to have a regular visit on the portal and see the information and the instructions that are provided to you to study this particular course or maybe some other courses also. So this should be a regular feature for the students to have uh, the uh, visit or to uh, visit the uh, browse the uh, course portals for all the registered courses and follow the instructions passed on to you. So the course outline comprises uh, introductions to computer and language. I will be talking about uh, components of the computer, types of hardware, software, what is that, the language history. Then I will be introducing you the uh, Visual C++ environment, IDE. IDE is basically integrated development environment. I had uh, thought about it at what environment I should be uh, working with you and you, teaching you and uh, after a lot of thoughts uh, I decided that I should be using the Visual Studio and within the Visual Studio we have got a Visual C++. So, uh, I will be using uh, this Visual C++ environment that has got an integrated development environment, means it has got all these facilities which are required to key in your program, to write your program, then uh, to pass on different steps that are required to execute that program. So it is uh, a self-sufficient uh, environment and uh, don't worry, I'll uh, teach you how can this environment be uh, set up. Uh, at your home or at the facilities where you will be doing your hands-on exercises. We'll be discussing the algorithms and flowchart that is uh, the program development steps. So you, how can you organize your thoughts, put them together and define the procedure to solve one particular problem or any given problem. And then uh, the difference between that uh, algorithm and pseudocode describing basically the algorithm in uh, your, as per your convenience is either in a pseudocode or in flowchart that I'll also be teaching to you. Then we'll talk about the uh, syntax, the semantics, syntax of the grammar of the language. Semantics means the meaning of that uh, grammar, keywords and basic uh, concepts related to the uh, C, the data types and uh, some related concepts. Then the control structure available in the language that is uh, the if structure then the loop repetitive repetitive uh, structures and uh, the compound uh, statements that can be used with this control structures we will talk about the functions then the very well uh, detailed explanations of uh, defining, declaring and using your own functions and passing on the arguments to the functions and different ways through which you can pass on to the function. Then there is a concept of recursion. So we'll be talking about the recursive procedures and then we'll talk about to the recursive uh, functions also and uh, I'll uh, teach you that uh, how these recursive procedures work. And 
and how this recursion is uh, implemented and used in the C environment. Then uh, uh, structure which is called an array structure, we will be spending sufficient time on arrays and uh, we will talk about all the concepts related to the arrays during the topic of arrays. Then the string is not uh, predefined data type in C, but it is the defined with the help of some other defined data type which is a character data type and we will see that how can we define string and then how can we manipulate strings. The strength of the C language is the pointers that are available to process and handle the, uh, the data and manipulate the data. So we'll be spending sufficient uh, lectures and time in learning the concept related to the pointers and arrays and when creating the arrays using the pointers. Then uh, user defined uh, data types which are structures, unions and enumerated data types that we will also be learning in this particular course. So uh, there is uh, a power of the C language that it allows you to handle and process the data up to the bit level. So that uh, feature is a very very good and powerful feature available in C language. So uh, I think that we should also cover this topic uh, in this particular course. Then we will uh, like to save the data permanently and for the future use also. So for that purpose you need to learn the concept of creating the file, opening the file, closing the file, reading and writing into the file, manipulating the files, different types of files, sequential files, random access files. So these topics we will discuss. Then there is a very uh, common feature the students usually prefer and they insist to use a feature that is available in C language which is C in and C out and consider it much convenient and easy and fast to uh, learn and that is these IO streams. So I've decided that this topic I should also include into this uh, particular course. Then finally I'll be talking about the difference between C and C++ language and we will conclude this course by discussing the design paradigm and give you a bit taste of the object oriented programming so that you should know the difference before in any advanced register course of object oriented programming you should have certain basic fundamentals and knowledge so students it might be an over ambitious uh, course outline that uh, we have uh, decided to put it into this uh, particular course but I am very much confident that we should be able to complete these all topics in the next 31 or 32 lectures that are scheduled in this particular course. The books uh, basically uh, for uh, covering the programming concepts, uh, I think that uh, the books that the very common and basic book that is available from the Robert Ruffour and uh, this is basically via Turbo C. To start with there are uh, topics that are very well explained and available in the Turbo C. Then there is another book which is called Let Us See and that book also contains some very good examples that I would like to use it in this uh, particular course. For the uh, introduction to the IT concepts, the computer science concept, a very nice book available from Peter Norton and that is Introduction to the Computers. This book is available. You are not uh, uh, supposed to be very much fussy regarding the edition, the latest edition or basically the basic fundamentals are available in any edition. So I will not insist you to uh, buy and purchase and have a specific edition. Normally uh, the editions which are commonly available in the market are basically the sixth or the seventh edition which are available to you. But even if you find the third, fourth or fifth one, don't spend too much time to go, go for the latest edition. Then um, there is a very nice book that is uh, detail in detail. This is See How to Program. Be careful, there is a book which is called C++, C++ How to Program by Detail and Detail, same authors, almost the same name, but I would recommend you don't buy C++, buy C How to Program Detail and Detail. Once again, 
I've got uh, in my library, personal library, fourth edition that I like it very much and I've gone through it a couple of times. I've also got fifth edition and for this particular course I've purchased a book for you and that is the sixth edition that was commonly available in the market. So students please don't be fussy again because we need to learn the concept. So whether it is a fourth edition or whether it's a fifth edition, sixth or seventh edition is also available in the market but uh, you should be concentrating to the lessons that I will be delivering to you in this particular course so whatever there should be at least one book with you either it's a fourth one fifth one sixth one or seventh one but uh, the examples that I will be providing you would should be sufficient but still it's not possible to cover each and every example given in this book so this book uh, may I'll be using for both uh, text as well as for reference so sometimes I call it as your reference book and sometimes I call it as your textbook. So I cannot distinguish uh, this uh, particular book uh, as a text or as reference because uh, I think there are three, four chapters that I have picked up and taught. Uh, decided to teach you in this uh, particular course. The websites I will provide you on the support of uh, that I picked up a lot of material and examples from the uh, net internet and that is the one of the very common source available to all the students and teachers so sometime I have picked up uh, these slides also but these are from the official websites of these uh, reference books uh, mostly and sometime I have picked up these slides from some uh, universities website also but for every lecture in my first slide you will find the reference to those uh, slides because this is the copyright and we respect the copyright of everyone who has contributed and produced the material either for learning or either for teaching so whether it is a teaching resource or whether it for the teachers or whether it is a learning resource for the students we appreciate that and there is always uh, uh, it should be it should be acknowledged and I have tried to acknowledge each and every uh, the website from where I have picked up the material I have also got the material from my fellow colleague uh, which is Dr. Sadaf Tanvir she is teaching uh, this course in the campus so uh, she uh, was very kind enough to me and she has provided me the material that I will be using and I have uh, decided to use around 25 to 30 percent material or maybe around 50 percent material that she has provided it to me and and that you will also get it in the form of lecture slides and demonstration exercises. There are a few more reference books that uh, I've got in my library and I've got available to me but uh, whatever I will pick it up I will provide it to you don't uh, waste your time in searching these books and uh, I will not be uh, using it extensively but there are few concepts something some very good examples and some uh, material that is available in these books that I would like to use it and as a reference during this particular course demo sessions since this is a four credit hour course and uh, you need to spend 50% time in doing the hands-on exercises as I said it's a one credit for web but this one credit means three hours and so three hours teaching means three hours listening to the lessons and three hours means you have got equal share means you have to spend six hours three hours hands-on exercises and three hours listening these lectures might be you required to listen some concepts again and again so you will be having the video available to you and then you can use it as per your convenience and as per your own pace and as per your convenient time so all the registered students are expected to have an access to the computer having Visual C++ installed on it so how can you get the Visual C++ installed on it we will show you, rather I will show you, how can you install Visual C++ at your computer, at home, or in the labs where you can spend some time and perform the hands-on exercises. So I promise.
requested, I will do it for you. At the end of every lesson or at the end of every topic, not at the end of every lecture, but once I will complete one particular topic, one particular lesson, then I will try to cover it up in the hands-on demonstration session. So I will be spending uh, some time with you and demonstrating you how can you test and execute your programs and run your programs and verify the concepts that I will be teaching you during the lessons and during the teaching sessions. So we will spend some good time in the demonstration session. I will be a little bit fast and saving the time in uh, typing and instead of typing each and every line I will be bringing the type text for you but I will put it up into the environment and I will show you how you can use that environment what are the features that are available so I will try my best to make you comfortable to spend some hands on uh, spend some time doing some hands on exercises for you so students you are bound to do some practice you are bound to spend some time doing hands-on exercises this course is not a theoretical course this course is a practical course where you are expected to have uh, a good hands-on experience I'll uh, teach you that whether the programming is a skill or whether the programming is an art or is a science or it is uh, something else that we will talk about it. But whatever the programming is, you cannot learn it. You cannot uh, expert of a programming unless until you do it by hand. And once you do it by hand, don't take it as a pressure. Just I will advise you just enjoy it just enjoy doing the programming and if you just take some uh, pressure of that then it is not good and you will not be able to learn the fundamental concept but if you enjoy it and you uh, enjoy doing the programming then I assure you that you will learn it very fast and very quickly and you will find out some secret tricks and the traits of related with this particular programming nation. So we expect to uh, deliver 32 lectures that include some demonstration sessions also. Then uh, there will be around four quizzes and uh, there uh, should be uh, two midterms and one term in examination. So uh, around uh, eight lectures time, uh, after eight lectures time, we'll be holding the first uh, terminal session and then again eight uh, or uh, 12 uh, more lectures then we have a second session and then after more 12 session 12 uh, lessons or lectures we have the terminal session so between uh, uh, from the start up to the uh, first uh, first uh, terminal session and uh, the midterm session we can call it as you should have one quiz and you should take one assignment then in between first uh, midterm and the second midterm you will be required to take uh, two quizzes and uh, or maybe one quiz and two assignment or two quiz or one assignment and whatever we will feel convenient after that and then after the second terminal examination and the second midterm examination and the terminal examination we will be holding a very comprehensive assignment and uh, we are required to take that assignment together I'll be giving you the assignment you will provide us the solution uh, the to that particular assignment and after the time I will also provide you the solution of all the assignments that I have given to you and all the quizzes will also provide you the solutions to the midterm uh, examination and also provide you the solution for the final examination so we'll be holding this uh, practice uh, demonstration sessions also maybe we're holding some practice quizzes also practice assignments also and demonstration sessions also so that's the way that we have decided to deliver this particular course so we start this course and uh, 
we start with the fundamentals of the computer concepts and that I would like to go through it very quickly maybe in two to three lectures we will be finishing this fundamental of computer concepts and whatever the concepts that are required to explain that we will do it during the teaching of the programming so computer what is computer a programmable multi-use machine that accept data and process or manipulate it to convert it into information okay it is a machine that take input as a data process or manipulate that data and produce information so we have discussed data and information there's a relationship between data and information the data is basically the raw fact your name my name is a raw fact the title of this course is a raw fact over date of birth is a raw fact but when we process this raw fact for example we know that this is the date of birth and suppose we want to know how old are you or when I am going to be superannuated so when I am going to be a 60 year old so what is my age so that we can process with the help of computer because the computer you know that what is the date today what is your date of birth then you can find out the difference and then you can find out your age so basically this is the manipulation of the data that you have provided you might have got the uh, schedule available of all the flights you put them together in, on the computer and then with the help of that scheduling you can find out the number of uh, flights which are scheduled for one particular week which are scheduled for one particular month or you can process the information and find out how many flights are going to Europe or how many flights are going to Scandinavian country or maybe the Stockholm how many uh, flights are available and what are the possible dates available so you will extract and present this information you will manipulate this information and this manipulation and processing is called basically the processing basically and that converts this raw fact to the information so process data on a computer is called information then there are some uh, blocks building blocks that uh, uh, constitute a computer system that's not computer that's a computer system obviously uh, any computer system should have a computer first but uh, we discuss it in the form of uh, a computer system should have a data this data is for the users basically you process the data for the users so you first of all you need to have a data then you need to have the users who operate it who manipulate it then we need to have the need to understand there is a hardware and alone hardware cannot do anything then you need to have a software so let us explain we have already talked about the data data is a basically a piece of fact and computer organize and present the data in the form of information then the users users are basically the persons or the people who operate the computer and the users are the users of the computer for which the computer carry out the task okay the computer is working for the people so users are the most important part of the computers they tell the computer what to do and they are basically the demanding people for for the reason the computers are getting advanced and advanced and faster and faster and having the more and more working space and more and more uh, internal and external spaces attached attach with the computer why it's uh, doing that once we have defined something once we have invented something it might stay there but it is basically the user that are demanding that are demanding and in order to meet the demand of the users the computer system is required to enhance or required to upgrade it and required to add more and more feature hardware 
physical components are called the hardware physical component something which is tangible tangible is something that you can touch you can feel you can uh, have the feeling of that particular people of that particular thing and that's why it is called a tangible so the physical component of the computer and we'll talk about it that what are the physical components but basically uh, you have got one screen and that is the physical part of the computer then a box which is called the system the computer system or sometimes the people call it as a cpu but that contains lot of things inside it then you have got a keyboard then you have got a, the mouse so these constitute basically the hardware of the computer and uh, the software obviously computer carry out the instructions step by step it process the information step by step this step by step what does it mean someone needs to tell the computer what is a step what is the instruction how to how to perform the calculation how to calculate something how to process something so basically you need to educate or need to tell the computer and you need to give the instructions to the computer these instructions are called basically the software this is a term uh, which is a software or a program this is an interchangeable term so you have the uh, something on the computer which you cannot touch and that is called the software this is intangible intangible means you can feel it you can uh, see uh, that the something which is working for you but you cannot touch it so basically someone can give you the instructions and you can listen to those instructions you can follow those instructions but you can cannot touch those instructions so just like that there are certain instructions for the computer which are available to the computer to carry out the task and these instructions are called software we'll go into further detail later on so hardware is a major component of the computer so that may be characterized in, uh, into different uh, fields or different categories this could be input devices it could be output device it could uh, a cpu then the memory and the storage devices these are not the hard and fast five categories some uh, books you find it out on with three categories you can have the devices peripheral devices that can include the uh, input devices output devices and storage devices and the second component could be the cpu and the third component could be the memory so this is the way of describing the hardware way of characterizing the hardware but basically these are the five physical components of the computer that constitute to one single computer or the hardware called hardware of the computer input devices as i already said the keyboard is an input device through which you instruct to the computer you provide the data to the computer you key in the data into the computer then there is a mouse mouse is also a clicking device you can pick up the uh, instructions you can instruct the computer you can give the instructions to the computer by taking the pointer to any particular position on the screen and clicking it over there means you are telling the computer to do whatever is attached and associated to this particular pictorial particular picture particular graphics or particular text that is uh, already placed onto the screen that you are going to pick it up so basically you are instructing the computer to do something with the help of the mouse that's why the mouse is called an input device then uh, you can have a scanner just like the photocopier machine you can uh, put any picture onto the scanner then you can scan it take the copy and then that copy and that picture is available to you on the screen and available within the computer where you can process it and then you can have a pointer devices and that pointer devices is just like uh, the pointer that you can just uh, write it down onto the screens for the uh, touch screens you can use this uh, uh, pointer to provide the input to the computer that is latest uh, device that has been introduced output devices most common output device is basically the screen 
the screen where you can display the data where you can output the data that data that uh, you want to show to the user you want to share it with the end users or you want to provide the information to the user with the help of uh, a device which is a monitor which is a screen but the monitors are obsolete now they just like the old uh, TVs which were very huge and uh, very wide but now we have got very slim devices and uh, like LCD TV so these uh, LCD devices have taken over the monitors and they are used as a screen so that's why we can call it as a screen screen could be your LCD could be your LED or could be your monitor then the printer you might require to have the hard copy and that hard copy you you are required to produce a letter and that you want to send a letter to any organization and that you want the computer to print a letter for you so that you can just sign it and send it to the end user for that purpose you need a device that is called a printer then uh, output could be in the form of uh, voice uh, that the computer need to uh, provide you something and then the computer has a capability because it is integrated into the system so output could be in the form of instructions in the form of uh, some audio signals and uh, that you can display it uh, with the help of the speakers video signals are also possible but the video signals are usually displayed onto the video screens or onto the screens there are some categories of the devices which are both input and output for example in your uh, latest uh, your uh, the machines where you can have a touch pads you can have a screen just like in your mobile screen so you can just uh, uh, use the screen and you can just touch it uh, just so you are not required to have the, the mouse to point it out uh, the any particular pictorial graphics or uh, a text so you have a touch screen and that touch screen also provides you the output also so this touch screen could be considered as input and output similarly there is uh, a, a device which is called a console this console is just like a printer but it also attached with the uh, keyboard also so basically you have got a keyboard then you have got a printing like uh, device combined together into form of one single device this device is called a console that you can instruct the computer using the keypad provided whatever you will type is printed onto the computer and the computer can also provide you the output in the form of hard copy means a paper and that machine contains both input and output so the console of the computer is also an example example of the input as well as the output device central processing unit there is uh, a box uh, usually that you can just place it across your screen this box people call it as uh, a cpu but it is more than that because it also contains uh, the devices also for example it contains some storage devices that i will discuss later on that is uh, part of that particular box and it also contains some other part which is not just uh, the cpu and uh, basically it just contains one of the part which is CPU what is CPU is a central processing unit people call it as a brain of the computer uh, does the computer has a brain is debatable because uh, the computer cannot think so I'll talk about it later on but people assume that the computer has got brain computer can take decision uh, yes the computer can take decision on the basis of the input but it does not have brain as per my understanding two parts which are the part of the uh, central processing unit is the arithmetic logic unit and the control unit so the CPU that contains the control unit and the arithmetic logic unit what is a control unit the CPU the component of the CPU which is called a control unit it directs and coordinate the flow of data through the CPU and from the CPU so the data which is flown out of the central processing unit and going into the central processing unit is controlled by the control unit so the people say that the role of the 
کنٹرول یونٹ از جسٹ لائک اے ٹریفک کاپ جس طریقے سے ٹریفک کاپ کنٹرول دا سگنل اینڈ کنٹرول دا ٹریفک سٹنگ ایٹ دی اور اسٹینڈنگ ایٹ دی اسکوئر آف اینی بولے وارڈ اور اینی اینی ویئر سو دس از دی job of the control unit to control the traffic means the control the data traffic of the data so CPU instructions set is also built into the control unit every control unit every CPU can execute certain instructions these instructions are already built in into the computer means they are predefined instructions which are available into the computer these instructions are on a very low level instructions and you can just uh, uh, you can just define your instruction by using this very small instruction basically this is a very low level language in which these instructions are provided so maybe your one instructions might require to have five or six or ten instructions which are available to the CPU in order to obey your one single instruction for example you might call someone to uh, bring the report from uh, uh, for the last uh, revenue uh, earned by your organization so this is one single instruction but the person which is required to bring the report might require to uh, break this instruction into 10 or 12 instructions and collect it that information combine that information put it together make a summary uh, prepare a printout and present it just like you can give a computer any instruction and that instruction is again broken up into the small instructions sub instructions and these sub instruction which are the basic instructions are built in into the control unit these are called also called the commands of that CPU commands of that particular processor or center processing unit that can execute these commands so arithmetic logic unit basically if you see that it has got the three types of operations that can be performed and these three types of operations it can perform arithmetic operations which are addition subtraction multiplication division and maybe you may call some uh, other also uh, operations which are related to that that will be done in this particular course also for example modulus operation or the integer remainder but that is the prime job is the plus minus arithmetic operations is plus minus division and multiplication we can say that then uh, comparison you can compare the two quantities whether they are equal or they are not equal they have uh, quantity a and quantity b are equal or a is greater than b or a is less than b these are basically the equality uh, functions and these are used for the comparison so this is also done by the arithmetic logic unit and then there are some logical operations that can be performed and these logical operations are and or and not so these are the basically uh, called uh, the uh, operations which are related with the computers that if a is greater than b and b is greater than c so this and is basically called that logical operator and this logical operation is also performed by the arithmetic logic uh, unit so control unit performs the control and has got uh, the instructions which are executed and arithmetic logic unit has got these operations that can be performed by the center processing unit then comes very important component which is called the memory of the computer the memory of the computer has got uh, two categories one is called uh, volatile memory and another one is called non volatile memory volatile memory is dependent upon power if you lose a power then you lose this particular memory means the information is retained into the memory of the computer as long as the power is available to the computer once the power is switched off then whatever information you have maintained in the memory and in the volatile memory of the computer is lost then there is a non-volatile memory 
so that does not require the power every time so there are certain technologies and techniques available through which information can be retained into this type of memory even if the power is not available so the purpose of the memory is to store the data or program but this memory concept of this memory is not like the concept of the memory of the human being memory of the human being is basically something which is related to the to remember something jisko hum urdu mein kehte hain yaadasht to ye wo memory nahi hai jisko yaadasht kaha jaye okay to remember something this memory you may have uh, the related with the uh, workspace workspace means uh, for example the table table of a worker the table top of a worker is the workspace available to that worker any worker is required to have a workspace have a table to carry out certain tasks so the worker comes up in the morning and in early days when we don't uh, uh, have the computer we used to have the typewriter so worker used to place the typewriter on the, the table similarly the computer loads the uh, information regarding the screens or regarding the printer and load it into the memory of the computer and it uh, requires some space to load that information regarding printer or that uh, the a screen then uh, the worker might uh, place uh, a clock uh, onto the table similarly the computer also loads the clock and that could be the uh, time of the day or the uh, time of the computer so that is also loaded into the memory of the computer then uh, suppose uh, the boss has uh, directed the the worker to provide the same example to provide the revenue of the last week what the worker required to do will open up the almira and uh, take a file out and open this file up onto the top of the table and then uh, this uh, top of the table is the workspace where the file is open up and then we'll read out the information and type it out onto the typewriter similarly the file is open up into the memory of the computer and from the memory of the computer the cpu reads the information and produce the output and produce a print out so basically we can say that the memory is just like the workspace the larger the table the worker has the more uh, the speed of the uh, more efficiently the worker could perform and uh, suppose the table is just too small and simultaneously the worker is required to open up multiple files so what the worker will do will close down one file put it back and then open up the second file but if the table is very large he might be able to open up multiple files simultaneously on the table similarly if the memory of the computer is very large then you might be able to open up number of files simultaneously in the memory of the computer so i think that you should have a very very good understanding now that what is meant by the memory of the computer then there are different types as i said it's a volatile and non volatile the random access memory which is called a ram this ram is a volatile memory this is the primary memory of the computer and that store the current information which is being processed by the cpu so this ram is attached with the cpu that's why it is very fast and it contains the information which is readily available to the cpu then comes the rom read only memory which is non volatile memory it contains the retains the information even if the power is not available so it's a permanent storage and normally it holds the information regarding the boot up sequence of the computer at the time you uh, switch on your computer your system is required to go through certain sequence which is called a booting sequence of your machine and that loads the operating system so what is operating system i'll explain you later on so this information should be available to the system that how should the computer is going to boot up that relevant information is available usually and provided to the computer in the form of a chip and that chip is called rom which is read only memory then we have got 
a memory which is very very fast and this memory is within the center processing unit means there are certain storage space which is called the registers and these registers are within the CPU so since they are within the CPU that's why they are very fast and available to the CPU within the CPU and this the storage means the register contains the information which is CPU is going to process that particular moment. So at the time the CPU is going to process certain information, it is going to pick up the information available within the CPU and that storage that is available within the CPU is the registers where the information is retained and the information is present and the CPU simply picks up that information and process the information since the this particular storage is available within the CPU which is the most prestigious and most expensive place that's why this uh, storage is very small in size it's a very limited in size and it is very expensive to have the larger storage provided in the, the CPU because it will increase the cost of that CPU so in order to optimize the cost of the CPU this storage is usually very limited and considered very expensive and considered very luxury then there are certain storage devices where you can keep this information uh, and that information you want want to keep it for the longer period of time so there are number of devices which are available they are different from RAM because they don't require any power and examples could be which is very familiar and you should uh, uh, know that and that is your CDs and DVDs this is a storage that is available and that can retain the information with you know that that you can keep the information and even you can keep this uh, uh, CD and DVD in your pocket so obviously no power is required then the magnetic storage magnetic storage is basically the hard disk and the floppy disk and uh, currently these are the USB drives also these are available and uh, basically these are the magnetic material and this is an electromagnetic phenomena through which you can put the information there so you can have a magnetized and non magnetized field of information to save the information in the form of ones and zeros or basically this also contains something which are the cells which are burnt and non burnt so you can just store ones and zeros so different technologies available nowadays to uh, retain the information or to record the information onto the CDs maybe if we could find time we'll talk about this technology also then the system software we, so we talked about the software said these are the instructions then we need to categorize these information the some uh, software which is called a system software that is available with the computer this system software is required to operate the computer this system software is required to maintain the computer so it could be either the operating system or it could be the device driver device driver basically are the piece of software that is educate the computer to deal with the devices, to deal with the I.O. devices, to deal with the storage devices, to deal with the external world. So whatever device the external world is required to attach with your computer, that uh, education needs to be provided to the computer and this education this information is provided with the help of piece of software which is called a device driver so you have got a multiple uh, operating systems and uh, most common is the Microsoft uh, Windows you can have a Windows 7 you can have uh, Windows NT you can have any uh, type of Windows servers you can have and uh, that are different flavors available to one platform under one platform which is called a Microsoft then you can have a parallel uh, uh, operating system which are called Unix operating system or you can have a Linux operating system and the difference between Unix and Linux is that the Linux is freely available it's an open source and uh, whereas the Unix is copyrighted one but otherwise both have the same characteristics then you have got another 
Ubuntu. Ubuntu is uh, the uh, operating system that simulates a Linux environment on your Microsoft environment. So basically, this is also uh, the uh, type of operating system which has got its own characteristics. Maybe we will teach you more in detail in the course of the operating systems. Then comes some application software. The system software only require to maintain the computer, to process the computer, to process the information and operate the machine. But if you are required to process the information with reference to the uh, users, with reference to the utilization of the computer fruitfully by the user, then you need a software which is called an application software. Suppose you are required to write down the letters to the chief executives of different organizations, so you need the assistance from the computer. You need an application software, and that application software could be your Microsoft Word. You can use Word to write down the letter. Then this uh, application software will help you writing a letter, help you finding uh, out your uh, spelling mistakes, help you in organizing and formatting your text. These are features which are available in Microsoft Word, and that is the information, uh, th that is the application software. And all these facilities are available under this application software. In this course, I'll be using a lot of slides and this one is also a slide that I have prepared in the PowerPoint. So the PowerPoint is also from the Microsoft and that is the application software that is required to prepare the presentation. So these are the different logos of the Microsoft. Then there is another application software which is very common nowadays which is a search engine which is called a Google. By itself it has grown uh, almost uh, as high or as uh, equal to the Microsoft also. So the Google by itself is uh, the, an organization providing you a lot of online information and that is through search engine which is an application software. Then you sometimes require a utility program that is also a piece of software, but it is neither a system software nor an application software. So sometimes you are required to maintain the machine or maintain your data. Uh, I can give you the example that uh, you are required to take up a backup. Backup means that you want to keep a duplicate copy uh, that you want to keep it uh, at a safe place that if your computer crashes or it uh, goes out of order then still whatever efforts you have done you would like to retain the data available to you that you can keep it on to some uh, separate uh, media and for that purpose you need, a, you need to take the backups and then uh, uh, you need to uh, organize the uh, files on your computers and for that purpose you can use the utility software which are available by, uh, provided by the Norton. So the Norton utilities are very useful and that also includes the screen savers also. If you just leave the uh, one picture on uh, the monitor of the uh, screen of the computer then the uh, growing that particular picture for a long period of time leads an impression onto that particular uh, screen. In order to avoid that uh, permanent uh, the impression that is left on that to the screen, we usually, uh, whenever you are not doing anything, then whatever is printed and available onto the screen, we run the screen savers. And these screen savers are the different uh, uh, pictures which are rotating, which are changing its position, so the permanent patterns are not retained there. Then uh, there are certain viruses that uh, might uh, corrupt uh, or destroy your data, so you are required to basically safeguard your files. For that purpose, you might require to have an antivirus, and that antivirus is also considered as a utility program. Let's quickly talk about that how this uh, CPU works. So basically, CPU perform any operation in four steps. What are these four steps? These four steps are called fetch, decode, execute, and store. Fetch means to obtain a program instructions or data item from the memory. 
whatever instruction that you want to give to the computer is first loaded into the memory of the computer then this information is loaded into the CPU what does it mean that it is taken from the memory into the registers available within the CPU that we have just talked about few minutes back so from the memory you are required to take this information into the CPU this process is called fetch fetch the data or fetch the instruction decode then the system should require that what type of command single command or multiple command the system is going to execute in order to obey or in order to execute that instructions this is called decode so after fetch you are required to decode means what to do next and then execute execute means do if you know know what you have to do it now you have to do it it is called execute so carry out the command carry out the execution so if you carry out certain execution then you are required to save the data also so how can you save the data you will store the data means you have to empty those registers and all the process information you are required to take back and put it into the memory of the computer so four steps fetch decode execute and store so these are the four basic operations that are performed by the CPU and for performing these uh, four operations we call it as a machine cycle this machine cycle comprises two parts I time and E time I time is called instructions time during the instructions time the computer performs the two steps out of four that we have discussed means the computer fetch and decode in the instruction time or in short I time then in the next half cycle which is called execution time and in which the computer execute the instruction and save the result back into the memory of the computer so carrying out the four steps which is the uh, machine cycle of the computer is uh, split up into the two more concept as the instruction time and the execution time then it's very a uh, basic question that how the CPU synchronizes its task with the multiple uh, devices attached the memory is also attached with the computer the, if the memory is attached with the uh, computer then the CPU has to synchronize it to the memory the input device is also attached with the computer you need to synchronize it with the input device whether the input device has sent the data whether the send uh, the send data has properly received by the memory of the computer so in that case you need to synchronize the memory of the computer with the input device so in order to synchronize you need to have some mechanism so that mechanism is basically the clock of the computer the clock of the computer which is a digital clock digital clock means it's got either zero or one it has got scare waves so with the help of this clock with the help of this rising pulse starting a clock cycle basically this is one clock cycle starting from this going up going down going this so this starts the next cycle so this constitute one tick is a one cycle so the, the faster the clock the faster the CPU will work and CPU will execute the instruction much quickly if the clock is very fast because the CPU has to do it in some uh, few machine cycles the job is done few machine cycle if the machine cycle means you know the time period is uh, basically uh, inversely proportional to the frequency what is the frequency frequency is the number of uh, clock pulses in per unit time they are vice versa so faster the clock means you have more pulses in uh, one unit time so you can carry out more machine cycles in per unit time means you can carry out more instructions per unit time so faster the clock the faster the machine so we started with the machines having the kilohertz and then uh, we had the machines in the recent past that uh, used to process in the megahertz and now that we have got the processor that can carry out the task in the gigahertz so hertz is basically basically the cycles per second cycles per second 
Then there are different types of the computer. We can categorize the computer into the supercomputers, the mini computers, mainframe computers, and microcontrollers. The supercomputer is the largest one, whereas the microcontroller are the smallest uh, one among the four. So this is the characteristics: supercomputers, mainframe computers, mini computers, and microcontroller. So this is the example of the supercomputer. Most powerful computers, physically larger in size, so hundreds and thousands of processors that can process huge amount of data. Examples are the IBM ASCI, White, the Cray computer. These computers are available in the Europe, and they can carry out the task in a very fast. and they are basically used for a specialized task which is called the simulations and sim they can simulate any process any process that might happen in the past any process that might have happened in the future or they can have a number of fields area where you can use these uh, computers but normally for the third world these computers are not available so these uh, computers are normally not available to the third world mainframe computers used by the banks airlines insurance companies they are still the machines that can carry out the task very fast as uh, compared to the personal computer that we talk about later on so they can uh, carry out the millions of instructions rather uh, we can say the trillions of instructions per second so <clears throat> they are usually for the uh, larger in size so not uh, the small they occupy larger space and uh, they have got uh, the dumb terminal dumb terminals uh, is uh, a terminal that just contain a monitor and contain a keyboard so they are called dumb terminal but they are intelligent terminals their terminals are attached to the mainframe computer so on the one mainframe computer you can attach 16 32 64 or even 128 terminal so the mainframe computer can simultaneously serve a few hundred people and can each and every person assumes that the computer is carrying out the task for that particular user only so they are also very fast machines and they are quite a good number of mainframe computers which are available in Pakistan also then the mini computers in between the uh, your uh, pcs and the mainframe computer there are uh computer which are called mini computers still they provide a multi user mainframe i said that they can have few hundreds of user that can simultaneously work on the computer but if you can reduce the number of size and still the computer can provide the capability of the multi users that it can satisfy or uh, carry out the task for the multi users simultaneously so these computers are called mini computers and these are basically the mid range computers for example spark computers power computers pdp 11 pdp 7 these are all the computers which are uh, the which can be considered the uh, as a mini computer i have given here few examples of the mini computers also finally the pcs your personal computers these first personal computers are also called the micro computers you can have a laptop you can have a variety of laptop you can have a desktop and you can have a notebook you can have tablets these are all basically the examples of the microcontrollers or you even nowadays you can have a handheld computers or a smartphones also have the capability of processing the data so this is basically the uh, category where you can put in your personal computer usually one person personal means uh, one person so it can carry out uh, the task for one particular person it can also carry out a multitasking task multitasking uh, is mean more than one task simultaneously but it may not be for the multi user it can be for one single user for example your desktop computer can uh, perform uh, the internet services for you you can uh, just uh, download something simultaneously you can write a letter simultaneously you can print something onto the uh, printer so these are the three different tasks that you can assign your personal computer but still the user could be a single user
okay so this is the example of the multitasking then comes the microcontrollers microcontrollers are ba controllers are basically the uh, customized controller for the customized devices basically they are embedded into the system for example you might have a microcontroller embedded on your uh, uh, washing machine automatic washing machine you might have a microcontroller uh, controlling your refrigerator controlling your microwave oven so these are basically uh, the controllers which are embedded in which are inserted for carrying out some customized job and they are very small in nature they are very small chips but still they can process the data as if they are the uh, processed by the computer so these are called uh, very very small and they are even uh, your wristwatch wristwatch can uh, have uh, uh, the microcontroller and you can carry out number of tasks uh, on your wristwatch or on your mobile phone yes you can have uh, you have it because your mobile phone can also process number of tasks number of data that's why you have also got uh, the operating systems also you can have a uh, symbian phones where you have a symbian uh, operating system you can have an android operating system for your mobile phone so obviously there is an operating system so there is uh, a controller or there is a processor available so they are embedded into the appliances so students before i conclude this uh, uh, particular uh, lesson i'd like to teach you the concept of uh, it the people ask the student ask and lot of uh, people will ask you what is an it still, people are still confused and uh, but it's nothing to be confused i can give you a very detailed uh, concept that can distinguish between it and the computer science so what is it in order to understand it you should know that the computer is a device that uses a digital signal wo jo maine clock abhi aapko batayi thi that is a digital signal and this is the clock of the computer and computer were working as soon as we have invented the computers we invented the computer using this digital signal then there was another uh, uh industry that was a very powerful industry which was the communication industry and that is using the communication devices so this uh, industry used the analog signal and what is this analog signal this is basically the analog signal so the computer were working with the digital signals and the communication devices were working with an analog signal but later on in the recent past 10 years back this uh, communication devices started working with the digital signal and we have introduced the digital communication once we had the digital communication it was very optimal it was easy and it was easy to process and maintain and therefore the communication devices started working in the digital with the digital signals okay so the computers they were already working in the digital signal and communication devices also started working in the digital signal so what happened there was a natural merger between the computers and the communication so the computers and communications uh, devices were merged together the computer started providing you this communication okay you have launched internet you have uh, uh, attached a fax machine the facilities available to you you can uh, uh, talk uh, you can have a video conferencing facility you can have an audio conferencing facility so you are doing the communication with the help of the computer because the communication devices are integrated into the computer so this computers and communications are blended together into a single device then there were few more devices for example mass storage were uh, uh, provided to the computer having this uh, base of the uh, digital uh, base and uh, then there are consumer electronics also because the embedded controller have gone into the consumer electronics also that we have talked about the embedded systems where we have this uh, microcontroller and you know that this microcontroller work basically is a part of the computer they work in the digital signals then your entertainment 
entertainment the multimedia they all were integrated together so the computers the communication the mass storage the consumer electronics the entertainment the multimedia they all came in and integrated into the signal into the one single technology or is Bhanmati ke kunbe ka jo naam rakha wo that name was information technology so information technology is nothing but the combination of computers communication and other related industrial industries okay so I hope now you know what is IT and you know the difference between IT and computer science and IT and communication those were the independent fields but when we say IT it's mean everything in under one name and under one technology which is called information technology or IT so students with this we conclude the topic of the today's lesson and maybe I have yes I've got a practice quiz uh, today we have learned uh, the, since it was the first lecture so just to if you have missed something so I will advise you to go back and listen it again and try to answer this question that is what is the difference between the data and information what is the difference between volatile and non volatile memory I'm sure that you don't know it now but if you don't uh, then go back and listen and repeat this lesson again memory is used for what is the purpose of the memory what is the use of the memory what does computer do in I time and E time how does the CPU synchronizes with other components of the computer can you name one or two devices which are have the characteristics of both input as well as output name at least two operating system I've given you name of the three four five operating system can you repeat it can you give me the name of the two operating systems only what is the use of these embedded systems and finally what is information technology so with this we conclude lecture number now we will be meeting again, inshallah, in the next lecture. Till then, khuda hafiz. Allah